Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video we are going to look at a quite amazing plant called the Wallamai Pine. Despite being around for around 200 million years, that's since before the dinosaurs were around, a live specimen of this plant was only actually discovered in 1994. That's quite unbelievable, isn't it? Scientists knew about the plant um, through fossils, but it wasn't until 1994 when in a remote Australian canyon, an explorer who was actually a park ranger as well in the Willamai National Park, of Australia, noticed a, a, a unique um, strand or little forest of trees um, that were in fact Willamai pines. Since discovering the plants out in the wild, the living plants, the, the actual site where they are in the Willamai National Park has been a closely guarded secret. And the reason for that um, is because that's the only group of trees uh, and they don't want anyone coming in, spreading diseases, bringing um, bacteria um, into the site. People, you know, potentially trying to dig up and, and take the trees. And because of the risks of that and also wildfires in Australia. There's now a long established propagation program in which probably millions of Wallamai pines have now been created and shipped around not only Australia, but actually worldwide, which is how I have one here in my garden in Blackburn in Northern England. These are quite fast growing trees. I planted this one at a, at a very small height, probably two foot, about seven years ago. And you can see now it's, it's grown, I think it grew for about a foot a year for a while. And since then it's grown more like two foot per year over the last few years, so it's really picked up speed. The Wallamai pine is evergreen and much hardier than expected. It doesn't get that cold in the particular part of Australia it was discovered, but I mean, it can get to freezing, I think, but um, it's actually hardy. It's proved hardy in my garden here in Northern England and has is definitely hardy down to minus 10 degrees C, possibly lower. It's never, never suffered any damage at all in my garden from the cold. One thing it does really need is good drainage. And here in the rather scruffy looking raised beds, need another paint. They have just that, they've got brilliant drainage in there. So that was definitely a great decision of mine to plant it there. It was a bit of a happy accident. I didn't really know that much about the plant back then. But I'm very glad I chose this spot. I was a bit worried for a while that it was gonna to get too big. And whilst I still do worry, it's, very slender it's very slim so it doesn't actually block very much of the uh, the garden it's not you know dominating the um, the raised bed it's just going upwards which is exactly what I want really the wall of my pine has both male and female reproductive parts and although I think mine's a bit of an alpha male because Big old dangly male bits, but I can't see any female cones, um, which do 
um, appear above the male cones. But there's nothing there. And they're very sort of round and circular, whereas the male parts are, well, typical, typical male. <laughs> Uh, a typical male shape, I'd say. And you can see on the um, male cones, if I just knock it, it they, you should see some um, pollen come off. I don't know if you caught that there. I'm sure you did on that one. So pollen um, on, the, on the male parts, but um, what happens in the wild is where these are at the bottom of a canyon there's an updraft which takes the pollen up to the female bits and nature does its thing not sure there's many updrafts here in this location but it'd be lovely to um to actually get some some seed from this plant so i might try just collecting some of the male pollen and just chucking it about up to the top, see, see if anything happens. Got my bucket to collect some pollen. I'm just on that one. Um, little tap, you can see in here. There is quite a bit of pollen, actually. That was more than I was expecting. I've never done this before. So let's see what, how much more we can get. So I've managed to collect one spider and a fair whack of pollen there, I'd say. It's a, a yellowish, yellowish orange colour. Probably a bit, um, looks a bit orange in this shot because of the bucket that I'm using. But it's, uh, it's quite yellow in colour. And I think now I'm going to try throwing it at the top of the tree and see what happens. I can get my ladders and get as high as I can. Now, this ladder arrangement seems perfectly safe, doesn't it? Not quite sure, but we'll give it a go. And it gets me somewhere near the top. So let's sit you back down over here and see how high up we can get. I'll just tilt you up a little bit more. Should give you a laugh anyway. If all else fails, I'll be in touch with you've been framed. And I now have one empty bucket. So, let me know what you think. But um, this really is a fantastic plant. It's completely unique, whilst um, satisfyingly and reassuringly uh, familiar looking as well, because these leaves are quite palm-like. Um, or cycus like or fern like actually but the the structure of the tree is like nothing else these aren't readily available unfortunately in the uk at the moment they have been in the past but um i don't know why i don't know why they're not but um hopefully they will be again in the future 
and I'd love to get some seeds from this and uh, start my own forest. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are.